We know everyone likes a good mystery, but few enjoy being one. Some just can't help it. Thank you for clicking on this video. I'm Brooke McKenna, but today we are going to be talking about a woman named Ada Constance Kent. Now this was a beautiful woman, but she loved being alone. Would her life have been different if she let someone in? Or would she still be the mystery she is today? By the way, I'm doing Suspect Summer if you didn't know, posting content like this all summer long. So if you're interested, please make sure you're subscribing, turning on the post notifications, and thumbsing up this video because it makes me happy. And let's get back to the story. So Ada was a British actress in the 1920s and 30s. She did both film and stage productions. And she was pretty wealthy. She was pretty well known for this. She had grown up, she was born in 1871, supposedly, we'll get into that in a minute, but she grew up in Fringringho, Essex, with her mother Helen and her grandmother Mary. Now her past, like many other parts of this case, cannot be really confirmed. There are not many, and it could be due to the fact that it's so far in the past, but I've done cases about the same time period and there was much more information. It just seems like Ada was a full-on mystery since forever. In the early 1900s when she was kind of like a teenager, there are really no records of her anywhere and this is kind of said to be possibly because she was already going by her stage name, Vera Vershaley, but that is not confirmed by the British Film Archives either, so it's really just assumption about her past. As Ada got older, she wanted a more calm lifestyle out of the spotlight, so she decided to move back to her hometown by herself because she was unmarried and Fring Ring Ho. She got a small little cottage there for herself and she kind of made a little home for herself. She also began to really show reclusive personality traits. She just didn't really leave often. She didn't have many friends. She would really rarely be seen outside. So it actually took three months going by for friends to really start to get worried, which is crazy, but that's how little they actually saw Ada. So three months later, when they hadn't heard anything from her, one friend in particular went over to Ada's house, her little cottage, knocked on the door, and she didn't answer. So then she let herself inside and found that Ada was nowhere to be seen. Nowhere at all. And that's when she went to the police and reported her as missing. So the investigation began, they went and searched her home, and they also found out that she had last been seen, like her friend said, three months prior on March 6th of 1939. She had went to the local pub to get cigarettes and the landlord saw her there. The landlord said that she was basically a regular that came by to pick up her woodbine cigarettes at Wellborn Pub and he hadn't seen her since that day three months ago, which you would think if she was a regular to buy cigarettes that her one pack would not have lasted her those three months. So was she gone since then? What had happened? The landlord said that when she came in, she kind of looked very ill and she was coughing badly, but he didn't really talk to her that much because she wasn't one to really mingle with others. So then one of the policemen Bernard Constable actually went over to check the cottage with another man. They went inside, the door was unlocked, they went inside and saw that there was still food on a supper tray on the table with a teapot and a cup. And there was also an open overturned copy of Romeo and Juliet, the book by the fireplace and an oil lamp. But these were basically the only two things that caught their eye that were strange or out of place besides the fact that she also had a coat that was still on the hook. They searched the place from top to bottom and still Ada was not in there. She just disappeared. But the strangest part was the eerie feeling that they got from searching this house, every crevice from top to bottom and not finding even a single clue, a single trace of Ada anywhere not anything in this entire cottage and nobody knew where she was because she didn't ever leave 
her cottage. So if she wasn't there, where the heck was she? When the press caught news of this, they kind of wrote about it nonchalantly, like she just disappeared from her cottage one summer afternoon and they hadn't seen her since, but like it was a normal thing, which that is kind of what happened, but they didn't really make a big deal about it like it was. She had been about 68 at the time and super reclusive, so it's not like she would just up and take an adventure. The chances of that, although there are chances that that could have happened, they're very, very slim, and especially that she wouldn't have told the close friends that she did have. But no foul play was found anywhere, and his, this three-bedroom cottage seemed pretty well kept. There was nothing overturned. So robbery was really ruled out as a possibility. Many different authorities went and searched the cottage, the surrounding area around the cottage, and none of them came up with anything more than the first guy who searched Bernard. There was not much more they could do, and eventually they just kind of gave up and the case was going cold until three years later in 1942, when one of Ada's friends, longtime friends named George Weinkoll actually came to Fring Ring Ho to search himself to see if he could find anything that police couldn't or he could recognize something that would give him a clue because he was her friend. He went to the cottage by himself and he broke in through the now locked door, which I assume is because the police locked it, but he broke in and he went inside to search for himself. Now, like I said, this three bedroom cottage wasn't hard to search even if you wanted to search every little area, you could do it easily, and he pretty much did. He checked under furniture and cupboards, and nothing. He said that it was pretty much like she just left and never came back. Now you're thinking, Brooke, that was the least enticing, intriguing case I've ever heard. But trust me, it gets so much weirder. And the mystery that is surrounding this case is it is in itself the fact that there is so little information that was given and provided and kept. But what you're about to find out will make this case probably one of the strangest you've ever heard. So while this case was going cold yet again and nobody thought that they would ever hear from Ada or about Ada again, eight years later, 10 years since Ada had first disappeared, the police got a call from the bank. It was March of 1949, and the bank needed to talk to the police about Ada. And what they said is more bizarre than the police could have ever imagined. The bank said in regards to Ada's account that they had tried calling her numerous times over the many amounts of deposits that had been put into her bank account that were large sums of money over the years since she went missing. Many, many deposits were put in, the last being the year prior in September of 1948. But they tried calling her many times, could not get through, it failed every time, and so they were calling the police to figure out what was going on. Now I don't know if they knew of Ada's disappearance or if they didn't and they were calling to see if they had any information on her or how they could reach her. I'm not sure, but they called actually to get help from the police. Of course this made police freak out because if she was getting large sums of money, that means she could possibly still be alive. This was a huge break in the case they thought and so they instantly went over to her cottage again and they were like, okay, we're gonna search again, we're gonna search harder, we're going to find her. It was 10 years later, but they're still gonna look because this was such a strange thing to have come up 10 years later. So they went and at this time, the cottage had really remained untouched except for a fallen tree branch from a tree that was outside of her house that had fallen in on the roof and kind of created some debris and rubble really within the house and especially in the bedroom so they kind of had to push through all of that to get in and when they got in other than the rubble everything remained the same the supper tray was still there but when they looked they realized the romeo and juliet book was now gone but 
that could have been anything you know maybe someone broke in and just wanted to steal a book but again the, all of the jewels were still there so it wasn't a robbery so this book was just missing they continued on and when they got to the bedroom that is when everything just halted laying next to the bed not on the bed but next to it was a well-dressed fully dressed skeleton and right next to that was a bottle with the label saying poison. Within hours, reporters were everywhere. They were swarming. They were thinking that finally this 10-year-old mystery was going to be solved. I mean, there was no foul play really found on the skeleton's body, like right at the site when they looked at it. And so everyone believed that this was Ada Constance Kent, and finally they knew where she had gone or kind of what happened, I guess. The skeletal remains were sent to Scotland Yard to have a forensic investigation done on it, just in case, but pretty much every in the, everyone in the media, all the police, knew that this was Ada. The British newspaper dating July 8th, 1949 had posted saying that the mystery was only half solved because although that everybody at the police department believed that this was Ada's body, they still had no idea what was the time or the cause of death. There was no major bone fractures anywhere. There was no sign of poisoning or strangulation. And nobody really knew what had happened, only that there was a skeleton now there. The detectives kind of believed that she could have possibly been murdered. But the, when the investigation was done at Scotland Yard and they got it back to them, even more questions were brought up and even more theories were about to come forward. Because Scotland Yard used photographs of Ada to compare them to the skeleton and come to the conclusion that these skeletal remains could not have been Ada Constance Kent. That is because they are far too big to be her size. Also, the aging on the skeleton was not the same age as Ada. As the investigation was going on, a man named Derek Edward Allen came forward saying that nine years ago he was a little boy and him and his friends broke into that cottage and actually went to the bedroom and saw bones under the bed. But he said not once did he believe that they were human bones, he actually had thought that they were animal bones and so did all of the other boys and nothing made it seem like they should be scared or they should alert anybody of this. Reuben G. Winkle was also someone who came forward saying that a little after Ada disappeared, he was actually a gardener for a local church nearby and he had seen a light on at the cottage, so that is when he asked the policeman to go and see if anything was there and he was actually the man that went with Bernard. When he went in, he said that there was really, like he looked around with Bernard and he didn't see anything that day either and there was also no bad smell, like nothing was decomposing or anything like that. He didn't smell anything or see anything out of place. The skeleton was actually thought to be of a man because of its size and really it's not thought that it could possibly ever be Ada Constance Kent. We still have no answers even though there was now a skeleton found in her home that had not previously been there. Ada's disappearance is still an unsolved mystery to this day and I want to know what you guys think happened to her because I can see a kidnapping as a possibility because of her wealth but it would have to have been someone who knew her as an actress because she didn't really talk to many people in town when she got back so people wouldn't have really known that she had a lot of money unless that was rumored around town and the thought of her just like up and leaving as a recluse maybe she just wanted to get away I could see that as a possibility she wanted to get away from everybody and their judgments and just wanted to go somewhere new without anyone knowing that one's probably the least likely I feel like and there's also always the theory that she could have went somewhere, committed suicide, and her body has never been found. I really hope that wasn't the case, but also any of the theories are not that wonderful because she's never been found, so we assume that she died in a tragic way. But I don't know. But also what I want to know is who in the world 
was that skeleton and have they run any DNA tests on it since we have DNA testing now or will anybody ever know who that skeletal remains belonged to? It's never been truly identified but police believe that possibly whoever killed the skeleton killed Ada as well and was the one depositing cash into her bank account. But why would they deposit into her bank account? Why would they give money to a dead woman? And if they had been doing it for years, how would they know that the last time that they did it, that the bank would call the police at that certain time so they should put the skeleton there so they can find it? It seems to me that this was very set up, whether it could have been maybe from a police officer, from someone at the bank. It seems like someone in this town knew what was going on because if why hadn't the skeleton been there years prior when people were breaking in or was it and nobody just found it after the tree caved in on the roof i don't know i that's just crazy but oddly enough some reports do still say that the body was definitely ada's and a death certificate was issued for ada constance kent after they found the skeleton. I know that this was a little shorter of a case, but I just have so many questions and I had so many questions reading it. It's just, it's like the more you read, the more questions you have because there's less information as you get going and then you have questions that bring up more questions that will never be answered and none of it makes sense. How in the world did some woman go missing and another body show up that's not hers in her home that she didn't share with anybody and really never let anybody inside of. I've also seen a theory that it could have possibly been her friend, George, that went in a few years prior to these bank calls calling the police, who could have put the skeletal remains there, who knew what happened to Ada and wanted to get them off her trail. Maybe she was still alive or maybe he killed her. Who knows? It's just like all speculation, really. Her entire life is. I just feel like it probably wasn't Ada who told somebody or put the skeleton there because nobody was really looking for her anymore unfortunately so it's not like she was trying to get them off, their t off her tail or leave her alone because really they weren't doing anything in her case anymore which is sad in itself but she didn't have a reason to want to hide from people anymore even though she had been doing that her whole life. I know that this was a bizarre case for a very mysterious woman, but I really hope you enjoyed her story, and I hope someday some information comes forward where we can at least solve one piece of this puzzle, because I feel like I have one of those like thousand piece puzzles, I don't even know if they come in thousand pieces, but that's what it feels like. It's scattered everywhere, and you're missing pieces, it's like when you have half of the pieces in the box and you lay everything out and then you realize it, that's what I feel like. and. <sighs> I'm stressed, but if you like more mystery type videos and not a serious case type videos, thumbs up this video because you know I'm doing Suspect Summer and I love your guys' support. I love that you love these because I love them too. Let me know your theories, especially on this one because I need to know any information you might have or any theories that you think could possibly make this case make sense. Give me a puzzle piece, put that puzzle piece in place for me, and I love you guys so much, and I just want to thank you for all the support you've been giving me on this series, because it really does mean the world to me that you guys enjoy it, and you're so kind with your comments and your thoughts and your theories, and honestly, it means so incredibly much to me. You guys are seriously like my friends. I look forward to your comments so much. And I'm going to stop babbling and being soppy. I'll let you guys go. Bye. Independence is great, but can easily become the one trait you will hate.